Yo, Tripolar Bear, we're going to talk about how you can complete your Atlas very quickly in a League Start scenario, whether you are a beginner or an advanced. All right, this is going to be a very quick summary before we go in depth with the Atlas strategy. Let's go very, very quickly through what you'll do if you're a juicer player and you just want a very quick refresher of the Atlas strategy. Uh, if you're newer, I'll go through everything right after this very quick summary for the Spurgs. All right. So you start your Atlas, work your way to an outer region after you find the Citadel by doing a T3 map. Uh, you'll be able to spawn the Conqueror here, right? You get your first Watchstone, put it in Tyrion's End. Now Horizon Orb, a T5, T5 map. Go to New Vastir, Lyra Arathane, or Lex Ajoris. Kill the Conqueror there. Get your next Watchstone. Don't put it in yet. Do not put that Watchstone in yet. All right, go to your third outer region. Get the Conqueror, get the Watchstone, put those two Watchstones into Glenach Karens. Now, do your last Outer Region Conqueror in Lexa Joris. Get that Watchstone. Do not put it in yet. Okay, now you do Tyrion's End. Get all four Watchstones from Tyrion's End. Once you've obtained three Watchstones from Tyrion's End, put three Watchstones into Valdo's Rest. Now, you have all four Watchstones from Tyrion's End. Do not do Tyrion's End's map. You should have a lot of Glenach Karens map. Get all four Watchstones from Glenach Karens. Put, only after you've obtained all four Watchstones, put all four Watchstones into Lex Proxima. Now that you have all four Watchstones in Lex Proxima, you're going to do all, you're going to get all four Watchstones from Valdo's Rest, the three Watchstone region. So you have all four Watchstones from Valdo's. Now you're going to get all four Watchstones from Lex Proxima. And you can put all four of those washstones now into an outer region to obtain more of those default washstones. Or you can put it into whatever region you want because after you've completed these, you will have spawned Cyrus. After you've spawned your Cyrus, consider thinking about an Atlas strategy. Also consider subscribe. All right. That is the very quick leap frog strategy to get your Awakener 5 Cyrus up and running. From this point onward, you will do the same for the outer regions. Or you can start working on the Maven atlas passives depending on your region you can get watchstones from doing the maven right you'll get maven uh inner skill trees for hay work or whatever you'll be getting these passives you'll also once you get to the 10 boss encounters be getting maven watchstones so even if you stay in this region getting essences you can still obtain four watchstones which is very helpful so you could get 12 watchstones from here and you'll be at 32 if you get another four maven from new Vastir and another four from valdo for example those are just examples that is a very quick summary. Watch the rest of the video if that didn't all make sense or if you want it a little slower and a little less spurgy. Subscribe. We're going to go over the very start of the Atlas, which will take a little bit, and we'll go over the kind of ending of the Atlas where you're going to be working on your 32 wash shows, doing the leapfrog strategy later on. But to start out, you're going to start in the inner region of the Atlas. You're going to get these four maps either by going through the acts and getting them randomly or Kirek gives you one uh, as you do the little storyline, uh, the quests and whatnot that you follow after you kill Kitava in a new league or, you know, if you're a fresh player. All right, so we're going to start out going through all the tips for starting Atlas from zero watchstones all the way up to 32. So you start in the inner and you're going to complete through the inner. I'm going to use Tyrion's End here as an example, uh, but you can start in any of these regions, really. <clears throat> but you're going to want to work your way to an outer region, and you can see these lines here. Maps along the line are a higher likely chance to drop. So if you go to Coves, you can go to Moon Temple and then Temple Map, and then you can work your way to some Haywork Maps. Or if you get a Wharf to drop, you do a Wharf and you can get a Cemetery or a Shore to, you know, Ramparts or Cemetery, right? So you're going to work from inner to outer region. Now, when you're in the outer region, you're going to want to make sure that after you complete a map in this outer region, and also, by the way, you want to be completing maps and getting this bonus objective. When you hover a map on your atlas, see kill a boss of magic or higher. Later on, you're going to see rare or higher for yellow maps that are unlocked with watchstones. And for red maps, it's going to be uh, rare and corrupted or higher. But we'll talk about that again once we get to that point. So you're going to get to tier threes and tier fours out here. 
When you kill a map boss in a tier 3 or tier 4 map, you need to keep an eye out for Zana. Zana is going to enter your map and she is going to have a kind of purple little portal after you kill the map boss. And it's very important that you notice this purple portal and you enter it so that you can get this citadel. And now, once you have that citadel, you can start to get your conquerors to drop. And also, it's very important to get Zana in these outer regions, right? After you complete the tier 3, go through the purple portal, get the citadel. Now she's in your hideout. And this is the most important part about early atlas progression. Zana sells you maps for chance orbs. You need to be picking up the chance orbs you find while leveling and the chance orbs and alchemies, of course, you find while mapping. You can buy maps from Zana with chance orbs and later on alchemies and chaos orbs. White maps are chance orbs. Yellow maps are going to be chance orbs at first and eventually they're going to turn into alchemies for the higher tier. And red maps are going to be alchemies and eventually chaos, which is sort of not worth it in the end. But what is very worth it is these early white maps and early yellow maps. Now, when you're completing your atlas, it's omega important that you have about 100 completion once you hit red maps around like T13 red maps. If you want to be sustaining red maps, which you do on League Start. So many people rush to red maps without any completion at all, and they can't sustain because they don't have any completion. If you can't sustain, it's going to be a completion or the rarity of the map that you're doing problem, right? You always want to do elked maps. Even white maps, you could do elked, right? Uh, this bonus here is magic or higher, right? So it can be rare and it can even be corrupted if you want or if you can. You can do these rare and you could do them rare and corrupted. So it's very, very, very important to get the bonus up. The bonus gives you a chance at higher tier. Below 100 is going to be, right? If I had 50 bonus, it's a 50% chance every time a map drops that it's increased in tier by one. Once you get over 100, you are always guaranteed plus one to the tier of whatever map is dropping, right? So if you got a tier 14 map to drop and you have, or if the game, you know, calculates that you got a tier 14 to drop and you have more than 100 Atlas bonus, it is guaranteed to be a T15. And with 163 that I have here, it's now a 63% chance to drop two tiers higher. This is extremely important to get up to at least 100. A nice sweet spot is around 120, but that'll come later on. Don't worry too much about that. Just try to go for at least 100 once you're starting to step into red maps. And that is why Zana is so important. Every time you get a Zana mission on your map device, uh, where is she? Right here. Uh, I have a lot of these white, this is just standard, right? You'll, you're gonna probably have two. Uh, white Zana missions later on when you do yellow maps every time you kill a boss you have a chance at getting master missions one of those master missions could be Zana when you do a master mission with Zana her sh uh, her shop is going to reset so if you look at her shop she has ancient city mud geyser belfry and as a quick tip when you're in the shop hold alt and see if you have the bonus objective complete or incomplete you see these are all green you're looking for red it'll say incomplete but i've done almost all of my atlas and this is a standard character so there will be a few missing right but you use this mission and once the map opens with a zana mission used on the map her shop resets see now we have arena and sulfur vents so then you hold alt and you buy the ones that you don't have completed yet because at the end you're going to want to have every single map on your atlas being completed with the bonus objective the awakening bonus do not worry about that that's for after you've unlocked almost all of your watchstones the bonus is what you need to worry about right now just the atlas bonus so that is huge so many people miss that so many people miss a lot of resets on the zana shop this is the easiest way to boost your atlas progression and a lot of people miss out on this while leveling by not picking up their chance orbs and not getting chance orbs while they're mapping and then you miss out on like 50 maps you could have bought from zana instead of having to get them randomly uh, or by trading other players super super important that you take care of this because you do want that atlas bonus so now that you're in the outer region you're going to complete three different maps after you do that a conqueror will spawn you will see a green yellow you know whatever you'll see some kind of almost holographic uh color here signifying the conqueror spawn and you'll have a bar here 
telling you how many more maps you need to complete in this region at what Awakener level. Uh, at, you know, whatever Awakener level. This one will be zero to spawn the Conqueror. And once you do that, you're going to talk to Kirek and then Zana. And Zana will have an option for you to travel to that Conqueror Citadel, which will now open a little map window on Zana, and then you can craft the map if you want. If you're a little wary, do not elk the Conqueror maps because it makes them much more difficult. But if you're a baller, all right, or you know, you <laughs> you got a big member, okay, on a nice build, go ahead, elk it. Uh, when you elk these maps, they have a higher chance at dropping nice Conqueror items later on, like Awaken Gems or that Conqueror's Exalted Orb. So it is very lucrative to do these Conquerors elked if you can handle it. So you do the Conqueror, you complete the Conqueror, right? You kill them, and now you have a Watchstone from Hayworks Hamlet. You're going to put that Watchstone into Tyrn's End. All right, so now we've worked our way out of Tyrn's End up to Haywork Hamlet. If you have some palace maps, some atolls, uh, there's going to be a shuffle with this, so the, the map names aren't going to be the same. But generally, Tier 4s and Tier 5s here, you can use, if you've obtained any, Horizon Orbs on those maps from that region. A Horizon Orb is an orb that is going to change the map into another map within the same tier. So, if you use a Horizon map on a Tier 4 or 5 map from Haywork Hamlet... So we have an atoll here, right? We picked up an atoll, but now we want to go to the outer, other outer regions like Lyra, Arthane, Lex, and New Vastir because we need to spawn the other three conquerors and get their watchstones. So you have an atoll, you can Horizon Orb if you got any of them. See if you can get one for the outer regions. And you see here, we have a T5 in Lexajorus. So we've saved ourselves from having to go through Lex Proxima Go up through Lexajoris and get maps in Lexa, uh, Lexajoris. Right? We've bumped all the way up there. So now, let's say we do this cells map. We get more maps to drop here. We complete Zana's Citadel little portal thing after you kill a map boss within this region. We get the Conqueror to spawn by doing Lexajoris maps. We kill the Conqueror. After we talk to Kirik, Zana, open the Conqueror's map, and now we've killed that Conqueror, and we get another Watchstone. You are going to put this Watchstone into Glenic Cairns. All right, so let's say we get Alexa Joris map, right? We do the same again. We have cells, we Horizon Orbit, and now we have a Tyrn's End. We don't want that, so we're going to do it again. We have Haywork, right? And now we have a new Vastir map. All right, and it's okay if you don't have the Horizons. Just go through the Atlas normally. Uh, if you if you didn't pick any up while mapping or while leveling or if the new mechanic doesn't shoot them out. Uh, but right now we do the same for New Vastir. All right. You do maps in this region. You unlock the Citadel and you talk to Kirik, open the Conqueror's uh, Citadel map and you kill the Conqueror in this region. You get another Watchstone. Put this Watchstone in Glenic Karens. And for the last region, however you get here through Heisen, Horizon or otherwise, spawn the Conqueror by doing maps here. Open the Conqueror's Citadel and kill the Conqueror. Get another Watchstone. And this one, for now, you can just hold on to. All right, keep that Watchstone in your little Watchstone kind of bank over here. And that'll be the only one that you keep in your bank for now. Okay, so now we have one, two, three four watchstones we've done all the watchstones in the outer regions now we're going to move to the inner region we're going to do tiers end maps so we've been doing tier fours we've been doing tier fives now we can get fours fives sixes sevens uh and there should be a eight i believe somewhere in this region there's sevens which is fine so, you've been doing tier 5s, your bonus might not be too high. So, right now, to upgrade tiers, you're relying on getting plus 1 while doing the map. So, if you do a 5, you can get a tier 6 map from Rares and Magic Monsters. Or, plus 2 off of the map boss. So, you do have a chance at getting some tier 7s while you complete all your outer region tier 5s. So, hopefully, 
once you have all of the outer region wash zones, right, from Lex, Haywork, New Vestir, and Lyra, you're going to have some sixes and sevens to do in tiers. So while you're in tiers, you will have a bunch of maps now. You're going to do all of those maps, and you're going to get all four watch stones from tiers end with one watch stone socketed in this region. Once you do this, you are going to get all the watch stones here, and you're going to start putting them into Valdo's Rest. So we're working ahead, right? We're thinking ahead, and we're getting ready to prepare for getting maps in this region, right? So we got all of our maps from Tyrion's End done and completed with all four watchstones in Tyrion's End. Now that we have all the watchstones from here, we're going to jump to our Glenna Karen's two watchstone region. So while you are doing these maps, you had a chance at getting some map upgrades, right? You have a tier six, tier sixes, and tier sevens. And now you should have some tier eights and nines, maybe even one or two tens uh, within Glenock Karens. And now you get four watchstones from Glenock Karens. After you do all four conquerors in Glenock Karens and get all four watchstones from Glenock Karens, you're going to put them all up into Lex Proxima here. All four of your watchstones. All four of them. And what this does is lets us go to three watchstones here where you're going to have 10s, 11s, and a 12 and a 13, right? So now we're in T12s and T13 maps. And when you're doing and getting all four watchstones from Valdo's Rest now, you have chances at getting more 14s and some 15s from Lex Proxima, which is very nice. You see here, here we have a tier 15 map and we even have a tier 16, right? So when you're doing these high tier, you know, uh, 13s, right? You can get a plus two and go all the way up to T15 in Lex Proxima, right? So now we've got all the watchstones here we did all of our watchstones in Lax Proxima, and now you can start to socket once you get all four watchstones here into the outer regions. And this is the point, right, where you have all of these watchstones, right? We've got one watchstone from here, two, three, four. Now we have eight from Tyrion's End. We got 12 from Glenock, 16, Valdo, and now 20 here. This is where you're going to have a chance at spawning Cyrus now after you get all of these washstones here and you start socketing them in uh, around Awakener 5 is when you're going to have your first chance at Cyrus and then it changes a little bit the washstone system does where you're gonna have to complete more maps within each region instead of the very few that you may be used to during the early washstone progression uh, after your first Cyrus once you have a decent enough pool of maps once you have 100 atlas bonus or higher hopefully uh right and you, even if you're doing really high tier maps you can always go back if you have a tier three that doesn't have atlas bonus completed you could just do the t3 rare really quick right you could just rush to the bat boss and do that if you want to keep juicing and pumping red maps or you can wait until you get that red map version of whatever uh uncompleted map you have right uh, to get all of your Atlas bonus completed because it is very important. It does help you over sustain maps, which then lets you sell maps to other people who are having problems sustaining them, whether they don't have the Atlas bonus or they are not juicing their maps correctly. Uh, very, very easy tips to juice your maps, by the way, is to always chisel red T14. I like to do, but early into the league, I'll do 12 and 13, right? You chisel those maps. They give more quantity. You elk them. That gives a lot of quant and monster pack size. And when you're doing these red maps here, uh, you'll see some of the, some of the Atlas bonus is going to be rare. Uh, also, some of them are going to be rare and corrupted. So you need to make sure that you're doing the rare and corrupted versions, rare and corrupted for the Atlas bonus, or you will not get Atlas bonus for that map. So you want to juice them, and that's how you sustain them. Use your simple sextants. Use prime sextants. Use awakened sextants, right? To juice your maps, right? You see this has a sextant on it. I used sextants on these washstones. Some of these will give packs, right? This is 10 additional packs 
you can get 40 extra packs of monsters in your map and that helps you sustain your maps so so easily now these are awakened sextants with a uh, simple sextant it's going to be many less packs but that's still a lot of monsters added to your maps which can drop a lot of extra maps which help you sustain very early on into the league especially if you're lacking on atlas bonus all right so you've done your first cyrus right we went from the outer regions to a one socket inner region two inner three inner four inner you're going to start socketing washstones into the outer region as you can cl complete these maps after your force after your first cyrus excuse me um so now you can even think a little bit ahead and start to work on your maven atlas passives while you're in red maps now so for a lot of league starts breach is very lucrative right depending on it what they do with the maven passives keep an eye out for another youtube video okay uh depending what they do though you may want to focus in on lex proxima or lyra arathane for breach spawning to get breach splinters you can use breach scarabs and things like that to get a lot of these breach splinters early on which are very lucrative because there are no breach items in the league when the league starts right somebody needs to get those breach items and you can be one of those people another very good region is valdo's rest now they said they're going to nerf this so we'll see what happens to the king harbinger and whatnot uh this may not be too good of a region anymore haywork hamlet extremely powerful early on getting this essence node here is just absolutely insane if they keep essence on the map device where you can buy for 2c on your map a uh, an extra essence spawn uh if you see here it's essence right if they keep that that one is extremely lucrative otherwise you can still go for harvest if you're a crafter you know you want to do those early reforges right uh these are just things to think about uh and this is the point where you can focus in on this region and doing this as a juicer is very powerful so if we take our watchstones and we were completing them right we can even we can even take tiered zen we could take these glenock over here right we can take these out whatever you want to do after your first cyrus and we can do maps here and we can do them maven right you'll encounter maven make sure that you click this button and make it orange as soon as you get maven this does increase the difficulty of the maps but it also gives you progress indicated by this bar towards a maven encounter and these are very important the early ones will drop from the map boss that you complete them in it'll be some little quest item i think they are green indicated you know mostly by the quest items right these green kind of items that drop uh, off the off the bosses and whatnot uh, and then you put this in your map is going to be a encounter based on what map bosses you killed while under the influence of maven uh, and doing these and spamming these in a haywork region for example once you fill this up you get maven points and at the end you get right if you do that three times then you've obtained six maven points and now you're ready to just spam harvest or if you've only done it two times right you filled this bar up twice well now you can do essence in this region and you can very very hard focus on this kind of region also doing this lets you get watchstones you'll get chromium platinum titanium watchstones for hayworks region and this is very nice because you can replace your default conqueror watchstones with these and put your watchstones somewhere else so you don't even have to get all 32 watchstones from the conquerors themselves and this is a nice little way to go straight into some kind of map atlas maven strategy right from the atlas passives here and etc is very very good to do that as soon as you can and once you grab uh four haywork maven watchstones from this region you could even go and do another money make strategy in another region to get those four watchstones and if you do that enough now you have all 32 watchstones uh some of them from the default conquerors and then the rest right you'll have 20 default conqueror watchstones if you do that strat and you'll get the last 12 to get 32 total from doing three other maven regions or instead of doing that you can just farm the red maps in whichever region that you have maps for making sure that when you hover over this region 
it will say that you have not obtained that default conqueror watchstone right this region and on this character uh in standard i have obtained all of the watchstones in every region right but if you don't have the red watchstone in this region it will say not obtained and it will say number of socketed watchstones for required to spawn conqueror red is going to be baron green is going to be al hazim blue is veritania and yellow is uh drox the warlord so you need to make sure that when you want if you want to get all your washstones from the default conquerors that you spawn only baron in this region right now maybe you get an al hazim here you have to complete al hazim here and that's fine you won't get the washstone from him but hopefully baron spawns first i think they are weighted to spawn based on what washstone that you do not have unlocked in this region but you just need to make sure that you don't spawn baron in some place where you've already obtained that washstone right you do maps in whatever region that doesn't have that conqueror yet right so you would do baron here if it said not obtained on the red uh if this one said not obtained for green then you would do you try to get hunter al hazmin to spawn in this region right and then he'll have his green influence baron will have his red influence and you could do it like that as well i think i'm going to do my first cyrus and jump right into trying to complete the maven atlas passives and get jump started on those early money make strategies like haywork like essences breach uh legion down in new vastir to get those early timeless emblems and whatnot right it all depends on what they do with the maven atlas passives so keep an eye out for that but that is something to keep in mind after you've spawned your first cyrus now we're going to talk about how you unlock the middle atlas passive tree here right this is the uncharted realms this is the hidden atlas region or you know it's known by a few names but it's it's the uncharted realms right it's the middle atlas tree you get this unlocked after you complete one of these encounters and it's a little tricky because you don't have this region here to show you what encounters and what bosses you need to kill the easiest one to do now you can do these yourselves or you can buy a carry for them the easiest one for most characters is going to be the shaper guardians or the elder guardians so you're going to need to kill under the influence of maven by having this not be blue but be this bright orange right maven will witness and affect this map's boss encounters defeating the boss will allow maven to replicate the fight in her own realm you need to have maven witness layer of the hydra minotaur phoenix chimera or the elder guardians and you need to keep track of this in your head because you will not have this here to keep track of it for you right for me it said i've done purifier i need to do the other three elder guardians the constrictor and slaver eradicator right you won't have this you need to remember uh what you've done and you'll need to get one of these maven encounters now these are called uh if you're going to do if you're going to do the shaper guardians these are going to be called the formed if you didn't get one to drop while doing the guardians themselves then you need to go to pathofexile.com trade and look up the formed for shaper for shaper guardians there are other names you can just google them quick if you want to complete the other ones as well but for sake of brevity uh, i'm just going to talk about the formed here all right so the maven must witness for you to open this map layer of the hydra minotaur phoenix chimera once you know that you've done these you can get one of these and you can enter it into your map device as you would any other map and you'll have to fight all four of these guardians at the same time so you will want to be prepared and for your first one I recommend you don't do them rare right doing these rare makes them very very difficult right 41 percent more monster life they're gaining 100 physical is extra cold it makes that incredibly more difficult so scour them to get them done much much easier than you otherwise would and once you've done your first full encounter and once you've completed it whether you got carried through it which you can very easily just ask someone in a trade chat channel or global a20 i would imagine uh or you know you could even come to my stream 
<laughs> see if anybody, me or otherwise, could help you with your first uh, witness encounter, right? One of these Maven invitations. Uh, you're going to get two points. For these early points, the very first ones I recommend, right? You just did the formed. You did the Shaper Guardians here. I recommend you put two points into Remnants of the Past. This one gives you a 6% chance to get Guardian maps from completing any T14+. Plus. Now, it's 3% for Shaper, 3% for Elder. These are very, very lucrative early on because nobody has Guardian maps and nobody has Elder maps early on into the league. These are going to be upwards of 40, 50 C, depending on how early you get them or more depending on what's going on with the economy, right? These are just huge drops early on. It's very, very, very lucrative. And this is a strategy a lot of people employ as well if they can, right? They go to Remnants of the Past, and if you then do the Elder Guardian invitation, they'll go and they'll do Guardian's Aid so that Shaper and Elder Guardians are healed midway through the fight and are joined by an additional Guardian that additional guardian that joins can also drop fragments. And this makes farming guardians, right? Like Hydra, right? You're going to do Hydra. You get Hydra down to half life. Now Hydra goes to full life and Minotaur spawns. This is a very difficult encounter on League Start. But if you have a build that is able to do these kind of fights, you can go through. You can have Maven witness all four of these guardian maps. You're getting a lot of extra shaper fragments, right? extra Hydra frags, Minotaur frags, Phoenix, and etc. You're getting lots of fragments because they're being joined by allies. And then you do the uh, formed Maven invitation encounter so that you get even more fragments from doing these maps and extra watchstones. And you can even, uh, you know, get random other maps, Guardian, Elder, you know, you can get a lot of random stuff from doing whether you're doing the Shaper Guardians or the Elder Guardian kind of shuffle here, right? And so people will do this very early on. They'll just farm Guardian maps, get those bonus procs here uh, where they have a chance to spawn and drop their fragments. They're like doubling up on fragments and then they're like tripling up on fragments from doing the invitation. And then they do all four again, do the invitations again, right? Very lucrative, very, very, very valuable early on. Other than this, you can kind of tailor your passives beyond the first two to whatever that you need i prefer to get more spirus uh cyrus spawns so 25 percent chance on completing a map that you gain double progress right so that is very nice but the real juice in my mind is awakener of worlds has a 50 percent increased chance to drop an awakened support gem right so let's say globally, it's a 10% chance to drop any Awakened Gem. It is now 15%. That's huge, right? You're getting 50% more Awakened Gems by picking up this passive. It's very, very good. The Awakened level is nice if you're just blasting maps. Uh, but I've heard it doesn't really add drops to Cyrus. I've, ha I've heard that people have tested this like NB Extreme over many, many, many Cyruses. And it does not seem to increase... The number of drops you get by going from Awakener 8 Cyrus to Awakener 9, uh, which is a little silly. I think it's kind of dumb, but that's what I've heard. Maybe that is incorrect. It's up for you to decide whether or, want, whether or not you want the Awakening level. For me, I prefer, if I'm doing an Atlas strategy, to pick up the increased effect of Wash Stones. Because when you are doing, for example, a Legion strat early on in the league, you are going to want more Templar and more Marraketh encounters on your Maven Watchstones here, right? Maven Watchstones, you can alt span them. One of those outcomes on a specific Watchstones in New Vastir. I forget if it's Chromium, Titanium, or whatever, uh, but you can very, very easily just go to trade, right? If you want to do a tier and end strategy, you come to trade, you do stat filter, you do a tilde, and then you do Templar, right? And, uh, you scroll down and it's going to be legion encounters in areas have an increased chance to include templar you're going to do this and you're going to search now this is important all right please pay attention it these are going to be for whatever region you want new vastir this is just to see that it's platinum okay so this is a platinum watchstone so you search new vastir and you choose platinum 
also you want to make sure that you do non-unique because unique washstones are pretty useless and unless you're an omega juicer so now we have platinum new vastier washstones if you bought glenak you can only put it in glenak which is very bad for legion nowadays right so now you put your platinum washstones in here that have a large chance to include templar army now if you get four watchstones and they're perfectly rolled for 100% each, that's 400% increased chance to be Templar. If you take this, now that is 500% increased chance. So this is very, very good if you're doing a watchstone strategy. Otherwise, I like to get the plus 10% chance for Atlas missions, or if you have lots of Zana and you like doing Zana, I like to choose this to get 5% extra Zana missions, and to double the number of maps that Zana shows, which can help you do early Atlas uh, bonus progression and can get you very, very nice early maps like Cortex or the Rewritten or even Shaper Guardians themselves for free from Zana missions. Anyways, this is my Atlas guide. Hope you guys have a blast this league. Hopefully, you have a nice, easy progression to Atlas and very easily sustain your red maps because you got more than 100 Atlas bonus and you're doing the alchemy, the chisel, the vol strats, right? Juicing your maps up as much as you can, especially if they're red and you're taking advantage of all of your missions, right? Every single mission you get, just use it. Just use it. Use it on cooldown. Uh, unless you're going to do some crazy uh, Elva strategy later on, like, well, you know, once you get to an Elva region, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. All right. But don't don't be the Skyrim player that has 1500 potions of invincibility once you're fighting the big bad dragon. Think it to yourself, well, maybe <clears throat> maybe there'll be an extra boss at the end. Maybe I'll need these later. All right. Stop. Don't not with the missions. All right. Just use them. Use them on cooldown. It's going to help you immensely. Elva, you know, Nico. All right. Yo, not Nico. OK, whatever. Nico, unless you're delving, then you use Nico. Otherwise, okay, don't use Nico. Actually, <laughs> okay, don't use Nico, but I recommend you using all of the other ones, all right? The thing is, if you use Nico, there's no random chance for a Zana mission. That's the problem. I'd rather have a random chance at a Zana mission than a guaranteed Nico because my cell fight will be filled uh, no matter what. I do not delve early. I only blast maps, all right? Hopefully you guys have a good league start though. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.